I take Richard Manuel? You may. Oh my goodness. I don't want to take Richard Manuel. I thought this was I yeah, it was I think we should all take Richard. I think everybody should take Richard. I, uh, I just, uh, you know something, I was thinking about this exhibit and have been talking with Bob and Olivier about different ways that they're working so hard and doing such beautiful work to bring this stuff to light. And I feel that, that you know, my dad had a much more, um, you know, I guess publicly recognized career after the band, as did Robbie, so they get a lot of attention. And also, unfortunately, because just of the nature, uh, the nature of things, you know, the rift between my dad and Robbie became kind of the lowest hanging fruit for people to grab onto and talk about. And in the meantime, you know, Richard Manuel is like probably, for me, one of the greatest singers of his generation. I mean, I, I, I put him, I, I am also a singer and, and aspiring songwriter and, and musician and I mean, he's right up there for me next to Nina Simone and Otis Redding and some of the very, very greats whose voice was so unique and so nuanced that, you know, like Jerry Garcia, also I put him in that same place, just impossible to imitate and a total journey as an artist to try to emulate. And I'll just quickly say we recently did a tribute to Big Pink at the barn with the Ramble, which you know, as I said, the Rambles are usually a much wider songbook, and this one we focused completely on Big Pink, and we studied it, really studied it, which was wild to do, because we play half these songs anyway, in these kind of new jam out, people sitting in, big harmony versions of the wave and different songs, and studying the nuances of that singing, and specifically of Richard and Rick's harmonies, and those performances, it is like, it is studying one of the greats. It's like going to the Picasso Museum or something. It is incredible. And, um, you know, I think that, that more attention should be put on them. And I think that there's ton, thousands of generations of, of, of musicians to come to study this and learn from it and learn a nuance and a depth that you're not gonna get on a meme on TikTok. You're just not gonna hear it, right? And um, I'll tell, can I tell one more quick story? Because I think this will be interesting for, for band fans, because I found this fascinating. I had, someone had handed me um, these bootlegs of when they were Levon and the Hawks before they were the band. And has anybody heard any of those? Yeah, well, you can find them, I'm sure, unfortunately, yeah. anywhere online for no yeah. money will yeah. go to anyone related to Richard, but, but you'll hear it. And there's this thing that they're doing, like, you can hear, I said to my dad, I said, how did you guys sing like that when you were like 17? You know, you weren't just imitating little Richard and imitating these soul songs, you were actually, there was this other, interior voice that was already present in your singing like you guys were brilliant I just can't believe it I said that to him and he said we were brilliant he said we were playing seven gigs a week and each gig was about four hours and we were doing a matinee on Sundays and we'd finish those gigs and we'd go upstairs and we'd rehearse for two hours because they were you know how old they were 20 years old and touring and working all the time and they were given this opportunity to really deeply hone that inner vein of creativity. And I thought that was so cool to think about that. Entities in America now that deal with specific artists. I happen to think that the era of the great big music museum, like Rock Hall, Country Music, uh, uh, you got a bunch of them here in, in this town, of course, African American. Most of those stories are now embedded into institutions. And now what the trend seems to be is, you know, there is a Woody Guthrie Center in Tulsa, there's the Bob Dylan Center, there's actually a Buddy Holly Center in, in Lubbock. Um, those are the three principal ones. And now there's this Bruce Springsteen Archives and Center for American Music. And people will ask me, how come you, how come you broadened it? When I went to Bruce um, to talk to him about this, and, and I, had, uh, I had a lot of entities, names I won't name, but uh, said, hey, can you introduce us to Bruce? We'd love to talk to him about having his papers come to our institution. And I had like three or four of them happen, and I'm from Jersey, and uh, I'm thinking, man, I'm gonna 
Shepard Bruce's papers out of New Jersey, there'll be a hit on me. <laughs> so I, I decided I'm going to do my part as a loyal New Jerseyan and try and keep his legacy in, in New Jersey because there's few artists who are so synonymous with a particular area. The Beatles in Liverpool, right? <coughs> Band maybe Woodstock, but certainly Bruce in New Jersey. And so um, I, I went to I went to John Landau's manager and I said, I have this idea. Um, and because uh, I was involved with the Woody, Woody Guthrie Center and creating that. And so I said, this is what I'd like to do. And I presented to him and um, Landau said, tell Bruce and give your spiel. So I'm doing my spiel. And, and Bruce is says nothing, he's just listening. I can't tell whether he's thinking what he's going to have for lunch or what the next song writing is, thing is going to be, or he's actually listening to me. When it was over, he said to me, he said, you know, that's a good idea, but he said, I am, I am and this, uh, this is why we became the Center for American Music. He said, I'm just an ongoing, I'm a chapter in the American music story. That's all I am, I'm just a chapter. And that chapter continues. It's a great bunch of chapters before me, and hopefully there's another bunch of chapters after me. Tell the biggest story, include my chapter in it, but tell the biggest story. So we went home basically and started to think about how this could be. And so instead of just being like the Bob Dylan Center, or the Woody Guthrie Center, or the Bruce Springsteen Center, we added the Center for American Music and took on a broader palette to try and tell a bigger story, certainly with Bruce involved because his papers and all of his legacy will live here and it's on the campus of Monmouth University um, on the Jersey Shore, three blocks by the way from where he wrote Born to Run, which is kind of interesting. And his first real fans were college kids from Monmouth. And so um, we broadened it to have the Center for American Music. And then all of a sudden I realized, wow, we just bit off a whole lot. <laughs> because in American music, it's opera, it's folk music, it's, it's Leonard Bernstein, it's everything. Which is both a challenge and, 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 uh, and something that I lose sleep on at night because it's, it's a big, big role to fill. But um, I, I admired him for his, you know, his humility and understanding. It's not about me, I'm just, I'm just a chapter. So our goal now is to make certain that artists that we feel are chapters in the American music story, important chapters in the American music story, their stories are preserved and celebrated, and then again, like I said earlier, passed on to try and inspire others to understand this whole book of American music. And the band is one of them, which is why personally, and, and as the member, as the executive director of the uh, of Springsteen Archives, we jumped at the chance to tell the story of the band because they are a big chapter of our story. And I knew how important it was to Steve Van Zandt and to, and to Bruce and all members, Max of the E Street Band, it just made so much sense to get connected. So one of the earliest projects that we're doing under the banner of the Center for American Music it, uh, are these projects uh, with Olivier and Amy and, and the band Legacy. So it's exciting for us, but it's just a, a, it's a start for us because there are a lot of chapters to tell, which is job security, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so um, in addition to the project with the band, we do need to give a little nod to the Folk Americana Roots Hall of Fame in Boston and the fact that they've got a Bruce Springsteen That's exhibit right. up right now. So um, if you're in Boston, please let us know. We'll get you a tour. Yeah, we opened uh, last week. We right? did. We did. Uh, we must have been out. <laughs> All right. Well, this is for you guys. If you go back and listen to Dirt Farmer, if you haven't studied it, that was something that was really exciting for my dad to take these mostly country songs and stuff he had heard on the porch growing up and take the arrangements of them and overlay a backbeat onto the whole thing. So I just thought of that. We'll talk about drums. Yeah.